Trap code form is also a particle effect, but is meant to place particles in 3D grids or objects. Like trap code particular, there is an entire course dedicated to the power of this one effect. Let's dive into a basic overview of what trap code form has to offer. So trap code form is also part of trap code suite that is offered from Red Giant and we could head to redgiant.com to download a free trial or the entire trap code suite of 11 powerful effects. In chapter one, we actually went into full detail of uh, some of the features of trap code suite and we took a look at trap code DAO. And in the previous movie within this chapter, we took a look at trap code particular, which is also a part of trap code suite. So find out some more information at redgiant.com. Um, and I guess the big question is, how does form differ from particular? So one thing to keep in mind is that there's an entire course dedicated to this in the library from Chad Perkins, who goes over form as well as he goes over particular in a separate course. And let's do a search for form and find out here with a basic overview. So I want to take the form effect and I'm going to drag it onto my solid. And we can see right away form is different than particular as the particles stay put. There's no forces on them these particles don't live and die. In the case that's right in front of us right now with the default properties, it's just a bunch of spears that are replicated on a box grid. So to see this a little bit better, let's head to effect controls where we can see the base form, which is indeed a box grid. And its dimensions are 200 by 200 by 200. And these particles live on this box grid. So first of all, we can increase the size of this to see this and make it a little bit larger by hitting 900 by 900 by 900. And you can see that the particles are quite faint. So let's increase the particle amount in both X and Y to 300 by 300. You may have already noticed that there's a camera inside your After Effects composition. And Form, although being a 2D layer, is going to interact with your AE camera. To see this, let's press the C key. I'll start to orbit around my scene so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm now going to hit C a few times until I get my track Z tool and dolly out on form. And now you can see all these particles or these grids or the three grids in Z space, as well as them spread out in X and Y to make up this entire box grid. It doesn't have to be just a box grid, the base form. We can actually make it a spear or box string, which could be handy for certain types of motion graphic animation. You can also have your particles form around an OBJ file from, say, Cinema 4D or Maya. This will also interact with AE's cameras and lights. So you can bring in full 3D OBJ models to use as your base form. So that's great. Let's close out this section and go down to the particle section. And here we can actually choose from different types of particles to wrap around our base form, such as this glow spear, which I'm about to select. So now we have some glowing particles, but keep in mind, you can actually choose a sprite or textured polygon, which could essentially be any layer in your After Effects composition could be referenced as a particle. A word of caution, whatever layer you designate, make sure it's small because there's going to be a lot of them generated more than likely on your base form. So the smaller, the better for any layers that you'd like to use as a particle reference. Unlike particular, you don't have the same effects browser or that same visual way of working. But again, there's a ton of content on Red Giant and in the library that will feature how to get the most out of form in much more detail than this overview. Let's work our way down to some more of the most used categories and let's take a look at quick maps. I would like to change the opacity and color over the base form. And I can simply do that by going up here and turning on map opacity and color over X or the X axes. Just above these are some opacity map settings where we have access to a little graph. So simply think about this as opacity mapped over this base form from left to right. I'm gonna choose a preset here at the side, this round curve. And if we take a look at it with our camera again, I'm gonna hit C and let's look at our shape dead on, we can see that it, that it is fading now at the edges of the base form. If you can't see this, let me go back to the original and notice when I select this graph again, you can see how it's fading on X. Now, alternatively, you don't have to just fade or have a 
opacity map fade on X. You could fade this on Y. You can choose a radial base settings and opacity will be mapped differently across that base form. Now let's go back to the default and go back to X. So besides this opacity, we've also got color to play with and how color is gonna be mapped across this base form. So I'm gonna to go to the color map and one of my favorite little handy buttons is this random button. It's gonna just generate some really nice gradients that you can start off with. And if you don't like what you see, you can just simply cycle through different random presets. And this will eventually get you hopefully something that you like. If not, you can work with this from scratch. I wanna now go back to the opacity map and click it to get it back to its default settings. Now, a big word of caution, if I go to the top of this form effect and hit the reset button at the top of the effect, this is not gonna affect or reset these maps. So you want to make sure to adjust the maps in here separately if you need to get back to square one. So make any changes in any of these graphs, just keep in mind that if you click the reset button at the top of the effect, it has no influence on what you do here in these graphs. So working our way down here in form, besides quick maps, we've also got layer maps. And let's open the layer map section so we can see it a bit better. And let's go to color and alpha. Some of you may have noticed that in my composition, I have a logo that's been turned off. So let me go ahead and turn it on. You can see it's that film studio logo that we used in the last exercise. If you followed me through the particular overview. So let's get form to reference this. And we do this here in layer maps. So what we want to make sure that it's going to be mapped over X, Y, and you can start to see these particles are now being generated on this film studio logo. You may be asking why there's three logos and that's because they're in the Z space of our base form. The number is set to three. So you could start to see here how we can do things similar to particular, but in slightly different ways as the particles generated on our base forms are set to static. So let's bring down the base form Z value one and increase the amount of particles on our logo. So all those particles are mapped to my layer, which is the logo in the composition. So let me close out this section and begin to work our way down a bit more. We can have our particles actually react to the amplitude and frequency of audio tracks within our compositions. And we can also have our particles disperse and twist out in our 3D space. So let's just say you wanted to have these particles here explode. What we could do is look what happens when I begin to disperse these particles. You can see that they get spread out into the space and let me also twist them. So I'm just going to continue to twist them here. And then I want to select my camera so that we can see how those particles look in the 3D space. I'm going to undo these last few steps by hitting Control Z or Command Z on my Mac to get to the state before I disperse these particles. And let's take a look at one more thing called fractal field, which is another way that we can displace this logo, but this time using noise. So the logo is being displaced based on this fractal noise layer that it's referencing. So we can twist this shape to get some interesting results. Now let me undo this and let's take a look at one more field called spherical field. If I start to increase the strength underneath this section, you can see a circle in the middle of these particles has been formed and they remain on the outside edges. We can of course increase the size of the sphere as well as the strength of the field. Now picture combining this with some disbursement and twist. Now let me turn on the logo in my composition and you can see how the particles are formed around it. So here's an overview of what trap code form is capable of. And remember that these particles don't live and die and are not emitted outward. That is how trap code particular works.